But it's important that this philosophy provides tools and ideas that we can practice in our own lives. I'm gonna share with you some of them and I want you to start doing it today because maybe they can help you as the way they did to me. The first tool is that we need to accept the impermanence of life. Everything that we see and we do and we live is gonna end at some point. This comes that we one day will die. This is memento mori. Just remember you are gonna die. So you start recognizing things around your life. You see that everything you do and you're experiencing have a expiration date. And that makes you appreciate that every moment you do will not last. So if you are spending time with friends, spending time with family, you understand that this is maybe the last time you will have it and that this will not be forever. It's not that you can say, okay, I'm not gonna experience today because in a week I will be able to do it again. There are chances that you will not. Having this in your mind gives you first a little bit of anxiety, but it also prevents you from procrastination because whatever you experience it or you want to experience, it's going to be temporary. So better to try to enjoy it and feel it the most you can. The next one is negative visualization. We all going to experience problems and hardships in our life. Stoics like to deal with this by negative visualizing all the possible scenarios, negative and bad scenarios, about a specific situation. If you really think, okay, let's say you're going to an event, to a party, and you're anxious about going it, thinking, go through your mind all the possible scenarios that could go wrong, and you will be prepared for it. You first realize that nothing is as bad as you think. Once you relieve it in your memory, in your brain, you say, ah, this is not as bad, so why I should not try it? And also then you're also prepared. And this gives you a little bit sense of down to our reality that, okay, things, bad things can happen. But if I know what are the possibilities and if they do happen, you already lived them in your mind before, so you will deal with them in a more calm and precise way. And it's actually done in training for different aspects. People, for example, soldiers, they go to experience a lot of hardships that they could experience while in the field. So when they face them, they are mentally and emotionally prepared to deal with them. So do it as well in your life and you will see that might give you a little bit of anxiety at first, but then it will calm you, make you more prepared to deal with problems. In a whatever amount of time, everything you know will be gone. Everything that is about you or anything that's related to you, anyone that could remember, will be gone also forever. Your name will be forgotten. So knowing that, why do you care so much about what, what other people think? About what other people think about you or about the things you did achieve or not achieve in your life that make you anxious and sad? You need to focus on just the present because you will be forgotten. Maybe you're already forgotten after one, a few days of whatever happened in your life. And for sure, in maybe 100,000 or at least a million years, your name will be forgotten. So why should we care? And if we do this exercise in life, every time we go through the pain of relieving maybe some embarrassing moments, and you say, okay, maybe I have some little bit of shame about this, but it's just gonna be forgotten at some point. Maybe just people already don't care anymore, already for forget about it. So go through this in your mind and use it appropriately. Another thing I like to do is to zoom out in my life. Every time I face a problem, I imagine myself zooming out from my own room, zooming out, like looking from above, then I see myself the house where I live or the apartment and zoom out in the city. And then you zoom out from the world, that's looking at this little city in the, compared to the whole world, then you zoom out into the universe. Then you realize that maybe your home or even your country may just be a little dot in the world or in the universe. And you, you're just a very insignificant dot in the universe. So whatever happened to you, the reality that is insignificant to the rest of the universe, of the world, of the people, the city, and yes, might make you feel like you're not worth it and that you're not special, but also make you feel a little bit free. 
you know, no problem I have is that big. Why should I just care that much about it? You know, I will be able to deal with it. It's just such a little thing. Whatever is happening to you is just such a little. You're, maybe you're embarrassed about a situation and you make it that it's such a big thing in your mind, but just speak for you in your little bubble. Once you get out of the bubble, the world don't care. That also gives you a little bit of freedom. Because even if you're, let's say, in a very logical aspect, you think that in your little bubble, whatever problem you're facing is big, if you move or if you go somewhere else or if you just look in the full picture, it's nothing. And that for me makes me calm and it's a tool I practice every time I feel that I'm catastrophizing a little problem. Because there's a chance someone have it even worse and it's still insignificant in the big picture of humanity and the world. One tool, and this is a mindset about life, is to take responsibility of all actions, all situations, and how people react to you. And many people don't like that because it hurts, it kind of affects your ego of accepting you might be wrong, but it will make you grow so much, so much, so much, so much, if you take responsibility in everything you do. And I'll give you an example. You'd say you go to work, and then you're dealing with someone and maybe it's not someone you're comfortable feeling dealing with this person because it's not the easiest person, let's put it this way. And then you get into conflict and you discuss and then you get in an in in unnecessary discussion with this person at work and you think, ah, this person is this, this, this and this. And yes, maybe that's true, but if you take responsibility of this situation, you can say, okay, maybe I could do something different. I know how this person is. If I deal with this person differently, and I take responsibility of what may be triggering him or her about this situation will make you better in the future and also in your interactions with this person. Also, you can apply this in when you interact with people. If you want someone to like you, it's easy to say, ah, this person doesn't deserve me. Oh, I'm so good. That person is missing me. Or you can take responsibility. Are you showing your best self? Are you attractive enough? I don't know. Are you giving enough value? Take responsibility of everything and how people react to you. Give you back control. Give you back the locus of control of your life, which you can, you can use for whatever things you want to achieve for yourself. Just accept nature the way it is. Accept people and human behaviors as it's just natural and don't get mad about it. Don't get stressed about it. Just accept the behaviors as it is and just play with the rules they are. People act a certain way and we cannot change it. We can only change ourselves and how we deal with this situation. And if you're a man, for example, and sometimes you get bothered about stress, about how women interact with you, for example, and then you think, okay, why do they do like this? Don't get mad about it. The same with women interacting with men or men with men or women with women, whatever you care about it. Don't get mad about it. Why things happen that certain way. Rather, go and the flow and see human nature is the way it is i cannot change it i will just play with the rules and accept it and don't let this affect your emotions 